Thank you to Simthic, accessible via sim.gg, for the weapon stats used in making this video. Link in the description. In this video, I will cover the three mid-damage semi-auto rifles in Battlefield 5. The Turner SMLE, the MAS-44, and the M1 Garand. These weapons are the most straightforward semi-autos. This is because of having, as per the name I've given this video, middling damage. This generally makes them a good starting point for those looking to use semi-auto rifles with minimal special consideration outside of the basic presumptions of a DMR's or battle rifle's tactical function, or those looking for something effective at a broad swath of ranges. Much like the workhorse assault rifles I've covered before, but ranges stretched out for generally longer distances. When it comes to the combat rules I suggest, the Turner and MAS go well with the light infantry combat role, and the M1 Garand, for reasons I will go into later when I talk about the upgrade trees, works well with the vehicle buster combat role. In general, the light infantry combat role tends to work best for weapons used at longer ranges, like most semi autos since you will be more likely distant from resources like health and ammo. You will be able to take advantage of the improved health regeneration from long distances after taking damage without having to use up a health kit as often, assuming you take less than 50 damage by the time you reach cover. You also miss out less on the benefits given by the vehicle buster combat roll, as you will be farther away from the center of the action, which will keep you distant from tanks most of the time as a result. As for equipment, my suggestion for the Turner and MAS is the frag grenade, bazooka, and AT mines. My reasoning is you will want frag grenades to defend yourself with in case of a sudden close infantry encounter. The bazooka will be useful for harassing tanks and other vehicles from a distance. I suggest the AT mines due to their place and forget nature that benefits a more nomadic class build, which will allow you to place mines in more unexpected locations. The sticky dynamite works better in maps without vehicles, for obvious reasons, and can be useful for blowing holes in buildings to snipe from, or setting anti-infantry traps that could help you take capture points solo. The M1 Garand fits better with a more conventional anti-tank setup, AT Bundle Grenade, Piat, and Lunge Mine. When it comes to sidearms, my suggestions get more strained between two choices, the P38 and P08. The two pistols both have the exact same rate of fire as these rifles with even similar magazine capacities of 9. They have elevated damage over range for semi-auto pistols, generally faster swap times which can help to make up for the somewhat mediocre ammo reliability of the semi-auto rifles I'm discussing here. If I were to force myself to make a decision between these two pistols, I'd place the P38 with the M1 Garand in Turner, as it has an ever so slightly faster swap time. The P38 also has generally easier to manage recoil, making it better for closer encounters. However, I'd suggest the P08 for the MAS since like that rifle it also features superior bullet velocity and likely will work better to finish off targets at range. Be wary of its somewhat visually obscuring toggle lock recoil, however. For melee, in all three cases, I suggest selecting a knife as it will be the best weapon to use as a dedicated close quarters option to make up for these rifles' mediocre close quarters capabilities. For the MAS-44, I suggest the 3x scope for superior accuracy, for long range sniping to take advantage of the faster bullet velocity. And because the sight picture of the Turner's 2x sights are terrible for the vagueness and obfuscation, I also suggest the 3x scope instead, despite the fact that the 2x sight provides a faster scope in time. For the Garand, I suggest the 2x scope that it has access to for faster aim down sights times, as the Garand is a generally more aggressive weapon with the upgrades I suggest here. As for the upgrade trees, things get complicated fast. So let's take things one gun at a time. I suggest all left side for the Garand, and for important reasons that go along with the previous recommendations I've been giving thus far for the gadgets and combat role. The M1 Garand comes with the benefit of having an additional source of tank damage, the grenade launcher. If you're going to run the Garand, you should absolutely take advantage of this. 
Not only will you have access to the Lunge Mine Bundle Grenade Piat combo, you will also have access to an alternative longer ranged combo if you want to keep at least some distance. Let me quickly go over the steps necessary to effectively take advantage of this long range combo. First, make sure the grenade launcher is attached to the Garand ahead of time. Then, switch to the Piat. Fire, and the instant you do, throw a bundle grenade and switch to the grenade launcher, and fire it at your targeted tank. Having the grenade launcher available to you not only improves your range damage per second against the tank, but if you run into a tiger or other heavily armored tank, it improves the maximum damage you are capable of landing with the original lunge mine combo, if you follow up your piat with the grenade launcher. If you manage to survive long enough, you might even be able to reload the grenade launcher, or piat if you are brave, for an additional hit. As for the rest of the upgrades on the left side of the tree of the Garand, they lend themselves more to an aggressive playstyle that permits you to get in closer to the center of combat, acting synergistically with the grenade launcher upgrade. My standard suggested build for the Turner is left, right, right, with a special alternative build, left, left, right. The standard build is just that. It makes the Turner a very straightforward and effective mobile DMR that is extremely intuitive and easy to use. If you just want to use a DMR without any frills and do it well, look no further. I would say it's the superior build. However, the alternative build I suggest here offers something none of the other two mid-damage semis can offer, and to a lesser degree, even the rest of the semi-auto rifles. In exchange for a significantly slower reload speed using the stripper clips, you double the magazine size of the Turner and turn it into a hip-firing dump truck. I also suggest swapping out the sight and gadgets if you do decide to use this alternative build. Use the NIDAR sight, incendiary grenade, piat, and flame pistol. For the MAS-44, I suggest right, left, right for maps with very long sight lines, including Al Sandan, Hamada, and Panzerstorm, and right, left, left for pretty much every other map. With the high velocity bullets upgrade, the MAS-44 has the fastest bullet velocity of anything the assault class can use, and you will notice. However, the bouncing of your sight picture without the recoil buffer upgrade renders it difficult to rapid fire and still land shots consistently, which in closer ranges is important for the purposes of maintaining faster times to kill. Regardless of the two builds that I suggest here, the MAS-44 becomes more of a precision instrument, best for use at farther end of the medium damage semi-auto's effective range. That is to say, 50 to 100 meters. With that said, I also suggest you reload after each kill. Even with the magazine upgrade, the MAS-44 still has fairly poor ammo reliability, and you can improve this by reloading before you reach the end of the magazine. As for my justification for the rest of these upgrades, the detachable magazines is a simply more necessary upgrade than having ADS strafe mobility, as the ammo reliability for the gun is the worst of the three, and this has a notable drag on its performance. You shouldn't strafe and fire with the MAS-44 anyway if you want to take advantage of its bullet velocity. Combining that impressive velocity with barrel bedding for longer range shots just makes sense. As for general tactics of use, you should ADS strafe with the Garand and standard build Turner as if they were assault rifles. Hip strafe or ADS strafe and fire with the alternative build for the Turner and pre-fire as you walk into hot zones or pre-fire in a stationary position if you think enemies are approaching you. But stick to friendlies to ensure that you have decent cover fire for its long reloads. With the MAS-44, position yourself in the rear of your team's main advancing force and provide DMR support when you see enemies. Stand still when you fire it to take advantage of the barrel bedding upgrade. The time to kill for all three of these is of course very similar, since the only difference between the three is bullet velocity. While these weapons are very much good for long range in particular, they are actually among the fastest time to kill in the semi-automatics category for ranges up to 50 meters, and that time can even be further reduced by about 50% with just one headshot among your first two headshots within ranges of 29 meters. 
Outside of that range, headshot's importance is notably diminished due to the reduced headshot multiplier of 1.8 times. So aim for body shots past 29 meters with all three of these rifles. If you compare their time to kill with assault rifles, know that the time to kill in closer ranges only just matches the slowest assault rifles. Which I should point out, assault rifles can reduce their time to kill with headshots more significantly with a 2 times damage multiplier. And that covers the three mid-damage semi-automatic rifles. If you'd like to support me, like and comment on this video. And if you'd like to see more in the future, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell.